Hello and welcome back to Fullerton College Pre-Press course. This is your professor, Ben Kewitt. Today I'm going to demonstrate how to use Adobe Acrobat to do pre-flight on files. As a quick refresher, pre-flight is running checks both visually and automatically using software to look for errors in a file before you send it out for print. I'm going to show you how Adobe Acrobat actually has a good amount of tools built in. Um, and as I always maintain, if you've gotten your client to send you PDFs as the files for you to print, you've already won at least half the battle. But let's take a look at what we can find out about these things. For those of you following along with our full course, this one is the file from the next chapter, the PIA's training manual. And we're gonna talk about this at length, what's wrong with this file. Um, so we're not gonna go to all of that right now, but we'll take a look at what you can find out just using Acrobat. All right, first off, if you have a toolbar on the right, you're partially set. You can open that and close that a little bit for you. If not, you can go up to View, Tools, and then choose the one that we want, which is gonna be Print Production. There are a lot of useful ones on here for different things, but for us, this is one we're gonna use. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and click on it in my toolbar on the right. It's the one that has a little, what looks like a crosshair, but it's actually a registration mark in the middle of it. If I click that, it'll open up this drawer here full of different things. I'm not gonna go through all of these right now, but let's take a look at a couple of them uh, that are gonna be pretty useful for what we're doing. First off, let's look at Output Preview. If you've taken color classes with me before, you might have looked at this. This is a very handy place to go. Output Preview previews what this job is gonna look like when you print it. I don't know if the video is gonna show it this clearly because I'm just recording through Zoom, um, but the colors all shifted slightly when I clicked the button to switch to Output Preview because this then means that the, the computer and the program is gonna do its best to show you what it's gonna look like when it hits paper. So it will dull out some of the colors and try to approximate what that color of ink would look like on paper. Obviously it's not gonna be 100%, but it's a good reality check. If you had a bunch of vibrant, super bright, intense blue colors and red colors that are all based in the RGB color space, this is when they would turn more into the purpley brown colors you'd actually see printed. So first thing you might notice about Output Preview is down at the bottom, there's a list of all the inks in use. Oh my gosh, there are a lot of inks. I'm gonna stretch this box out. Good golly, this is a very good realistic bad print file. It has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven spot colors. In addition to the four process colors, which in production terms means you need a press with 11 uh, ink units. 11 press units, that is a gigantic press. And that means that you're gonna have a huge team of employees working to keep that press running. That means that this print job is gonna cost a ton, all because somebody thought that the Pantone swatch menu was a pretty palette of colors to play with and not actually a special request for extra care, extra ink and extra manpower to work on their pro project. So that's an issue that already exists. You can, when you move your cursor around with this window open, get a look at what the different things are. So you can see the build of the CMYK here in my menu based off of where it is. I'll do it here so I can go straight from the red, which is 100 magenta, 90 yellow, and if I go straight in, it'll stay there. If you have to cross over the white space, this doesn't really work for me to hover and point at, but hey, I'll take what I can get. So you can see that that red is actually mostly all magenta with most yellow in it. So it's not even the purest of reds. The purest of reds is 100%, 100%. Anyways, so that might be slightly uh, pinkish of a red, slightly, rather than a slightly orangey red. You can also uncheck things. You can say, take away all the process plates. I just wanna see what the spot color is. And then if you scroll through, you'll notice that, hey, that Xerox was in fact, oh, there's another one. The Printing Institute of the Gulf Coast is using Pantone uh, 300 CVC right here. So you can see that there are spot colors that needed to have been converted that have not been. You can also, when you're looking at the mix of the specific colors, I like to do this to check my text. Black text needs to be black only. So if I turn off black, it should go away. Hooray, it does. If text remained when I turned off black, that would mean that they're using colors other than black to make black. That's a big problem in general because that means if your plates don't line up, you get awkward shadows. And also, you don't get quite the same level of crispness to your text unless it has 100% of one of the colors. Because when you use 100% coverage, 
then the edge of the lines that make up your letters are defined by a solid line at 2,400 dots per inch, minimum more on a better press. But when you switch it down to half toed dots, then the edge is defined by dots with gaps between them, and the dots are not going to be that small. They're going to be maybe a 300th of an inch. So you're getting a much coarser edge and a much less nice clear definition to your letters. So this is this. You can turn on and turn off and take a look at the different ink man inks that are in here. There's also an ink manager button you can press. It'll take you over to doing the ink manager. We'll look at that too. It's a natural next thing. Ink manager is very similar. Ink manager tells you how much ink is being used of each of the colors on your thing. And on the left, you can see the little boxy thing that looks like a saint Ange regiment flag from a 18th century French army stuff, but uh, maybe you don't recognize that. It, but those little four triangles that show the colors of process are the process color icons. And below these washing machines, sorry, that's just how I see them. Uh, the circle inside the square tells you these are spot colors. All right, those are those. You can also go to set page boxes. If you need to adjust if they miss size their crop box, their art box, the trim box, or the bleed box, you can change that by adding in different numbers. You can also use this to double check the cropped page size, tells you how big that's gonna be. Let's look at the trim box. And the trim box for this comes up to 8.375 by 10.875. Um, I will often use this when I'm working with a client file, not to change anything. Let me re re rephrase that, not rephrase, restate that. Don't touch anything the first time you go through this. Open up this thing, but don't change them. You can just use it to check what exactly is their trim size. Because oftentimes, depending on the program they use, you get a really awkward overall size. Let me go back to the crop box, which is actually the entire like media box, basically. And 9.042 and 11.542 are really odd, really weird, but very specific numbers. And you don't necessarily know what to subtract from to figure out where the actual crop, the actual trim line is going to be when you cut the thing out. So you go down to trim box and it tells you where those crop marks are actually aiming at. If your client set this part up correctly. I really wish you the best of luck <laughs> on that one. Okay. So now let's go to one of the most powerful tools here. In fact, it's called preflight. We beat about the bush a bit here, haven't we? Uh, waiting to get started with pre-flight and the video about pre-flight. Pre-flight, I'm not gonna go through all of it, but I'll show you what it is and you can fuss through to look for things uh, as well. Pre-flight, oops, click something kind of funny there, has a couple tabs up here under profiles. You have fix-ups. Fix-ups make changes for you. I don't like using this unless I have to because making changes really does require open communication and consent from your client to make sure they know what's happening and you're gonna have to send another proof so they can understand what this did to their file because sometimes it has unforeseen consequences. They might mess up some sort of thing that they put in there. So this is not something to be used lightly. I prefer the magnifying glass in the middle because in the end, what do I like about pre-press? But the, the, the uh, kind of detective feel the searching out mysteries and figuring out what the problem is and searching for root causes and hidden motives inside print files. Fun stuff. So if you hit this one here with the, that one, that lets you look for things. And under each one of these things, annotations, colors, you can look to see what's going on with this. If I look at the very first one, 100% black filled object set to knockout, means that this black object is going to print with a white background, which is a problem if you have a picture behind it or a color behind it. If it's over white, it's not gonna be a difference at all. But if I double click that, you get the red X and it tells you that on page one through eight, there are some things on here. So let's look at them. There are four matches on four pages by the X. It will actually take you to them. Let's go to the first one. Page one, stroked 0.226 point CMYK. It has 100% black, overprint is set to off. Let's double click it. Oops, I'm covering it, I am so sorry. And it's in the GATF logo here. And that's actually a little bit of a problem as it's a, basically the black is being used as a stroke around colored text. You really wouldn't want that to be knockout because then you have the chance of gaps, the chance of those unsightly white gaps. When you get one of those white gaps between inks that should touch, that's like when the plumber who's visiting your place bends over and you see that line that white, white line between their shirt and their pants, and it says the word Hanes. That's what I imagine every time I see a white hairline appearing in my print job. You shouldn't be seeing paper. You should wear a longer shirt and tuck that in, buddy. 
Anyways, let's go through some other stuff here. Back to profiles, because results tells you where you were. Profiles, we'll go back and close colors. One of the best ones is under image, and you can look for the different image uh, resolutions. You can see if there's image only pages or color and grayscale images, you can look to see which, where they are. A lot of these I don't love. Let's go down to transparency. Transparency is good. I should probably explain myself. I don't love a lot of these because they are so specific that it's not going to catch anything but a very specific problem. It's the difference between keeping your eye out for anything unusual and keeping your eye out for, you know, red haired 12 year old boys wearing plaid shorts with only one nostril. You know, that's pretty specific. And if you find that, yeah, you found it, but searching for that, you're not going to find all the other weird things out there. You're only going to find the exact semi arbitrary, possibly based off a of weird owl song um, things there. Uh, they believe a flock of seagulls haircuts involved as well. <clears throat> so these are a bit too specific. Sometimes you have to be a bit more general. So let me show you how to build the one. I already had it built it twice here. Sorry guys. So take a look. If you go up to options, you go down to create check. You can build your own pre-flight check to look for things that you know are an issue with your press. I did this in my last job. It had simply had a pre-flight preset that I built that was the name of the company. So I knew whenever I was looking at files that we were going to run, I didn't have to go remembering all the weird specifications of what our press is like. I learned it once and I built a profile for it. Build profiles. Not good in criminal justice. Profiling is a little, depending on how you're doing it, a little dubious on the uh, ethical side. But profiling here is a great thing. So we're going to create a check. We'll go and do my very favorite one. There are many you can do. We go to image. And if I scroll through all this, um, uh, do, 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 do. scroll, scroll. So they see me scrolling. They hating. Oh no, it scrolled too far. Image res resolution. So we add this one by double clicking or clicking add. And down here, you say equal to, greater than, multiple of, multiple of. Why is that an issue? That's a very specific problem depending on your screening values. If your resolution and your screening values are too close to each other, there's a chance you'll get moray patterns and interference weirdness in your pictures. It's strange, but it does happen. So going down, let's just go to is less than 300 because 300 DPI is the gold standard agreed upon minimum value of what a picture should be. Have I seen images that are lower than this actually print cleanly? Yeah, totally. But they should be evaluated individually. This is the thing that if an image has 300 DPI, it's going to print as good as it is. If it has less, then it gets dubious. Let's make it. Uh-oh, I didn't name it. Wow, look at me. Um, let's go, whoops. Let's edit this. Sorry, guys. What a great professional sounding video, isn't it? Edit. So let's go here and we're going to go ahead and name it image resolution less than 300 question mark. There we go. So now if I use this one, I would double click to do it. It will tell me that if I go through it and it's looking for is there image resolution under 300, then it will say there are 12 matches on six pages. We can press the little button and take a look to see, oh, there's a 72 dots per inch grayscale going on here, huh? You can also see this one, the same picture. The, the grayscale is probably, by the way, a uh, raster effect. Um, that would be, uh, there's a grayscale right below it. They probably tried to drop shadow and it didn't work out. Um, you see the color image here is also at 72. This next one, oh, I'm covering it, sorry guys. Again, that GTF had the problem with the black ink. There it is again, showing up as a problem here as only. Huh. I guess it's slightly smaller by 298 dots per inch. Ooh, slightly too small. That's actually pretty decent. You can go through and look at them and see where it is. 150 is pretty low. No. Anyways, that is how you check image resolution. And again, you can go through pre-flight and go through every single one of those excruciatingly detailed things. And some of them are mighty useful. If you know specific known problems in your machines, you can use this and build your own profile to counter them before they cripple your print job.